All right. Welcome back, everybody. We got Jose here, who goes by Chewy. Uh, figured we'd be chatting today about his prep, uh, how everything's going for his shows coming up soon, and kind of seeing how his was in contrast to mine uh, as of recent. So I appreciate you taking the time and joining us today, Chewy. Of course, of course. Awesome. So what's your what's your shows that you got planned again? And how far are you out? So we're uh, doing the November 18th regional show, which is in Shelby, North Carolina. It's the NPC state show. That's four weeks out from today. And then we have um, nationals, which is for an attempt to go for an I IFBB pro car. And that's uh, December 9th in Irving, Irving, Texas, something like that. It's near Dallas. Yeah. So the national show is what? Three weeks after? Yeah. Or is it two weeks? weeks? Three, three weeks. Okay. Yeah. And you're going to be doing classic now? Yep. That's the goal. Just Hell yeah. Going for classic. Is the uh, national show, is that top two for pro card in your class? Is yeah. Is that yeah. the structure so, for that one? So yeah, that national show, it is top two in each class. Go pro and classic. I know some national shows is like top three in the overall or yeah, it's weird. Some yeah. national or just first place in each class, but this one's top two. That's what's up. So what's your, um, is it with the national show, you're still in like your like classes, right? Like you're going to be in like class B, C, A, whatever it is. Yeah. I think classic physique only has four classes. Uh, A, B, C, D. Yeah. I think it's only four. It could okay. be five, but I think it's four classes and and nationals. And I'm gonna be in A, of course, the uh, short class. <laughs> short king, the short king class. <laughs> yeah. Is it four classes for the regional as well? It depends how big it is. Sometimes I just do three if there's not enough people. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. And then what's the? Is there a weight cap yet in in classic, or is that just the pro? Yeah, so they adjust the weights for the NPC on Classic. Okay. I think I'm hiding at 5'5", five five, so uh, my weight cap now is like 172 or something like that, 171. I think it's 171, and I'm currently 161, So, and I'm still got yeah, like a good six pounds of fat to cut off. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, I mean, you'll be, you'll be under that weight cap, no problem. Yeah. Which is good. I mean, it's better to, to be for sure under it than have to like really push it to get under it. Oh yeah. I'm way under like 15 pounds. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's the, the weight caps now in classic and men's physique is insane. I mean, like being between five ten and 11, they're saying like 209 for men's physique and then 219 for classic, which is fucking crazy. Yeah. That's a lot. It's, it's big for, for that height. I can't yeah. imagine me being 171, like, shredded on stage. That's, like, big for me. Yeah, yeah, on a 5'5 five, five frame. And you, you fill out your frame pretty well, so, I mean, you'd be, you'd be huge at 171. It'd be crazy. You'd be, like, a little tiny, like, you'd be, like, a taller but a little smaller Sean Clarita. Yeah. <laughs> giant killer. You'd be classic <laughs> giant killer. That's crazy because he's, like, 5'2", and he weighs, like, what, 180? 8, 189, like 190 yeah. Which is insane for his height. People don't realize how like mm -hmm. short that fucking is. Mm -hmm. And to be that heavy on stage is crazy. I mean, I was I was less than that immense physique. Granted, I had a lot of fat to lose still, but I was less than that even. And I'm I got like eight, nine inches on him, you know? So like that's fucking wild. But I was talking to Brandon who's now my barber and he, uh, he, he can go up to like 239, I think in men's physique or something. That's wild. Which is like just fucking massive. I think what is, I think he's like six, four or something like that, but six, three, six, four, but like, that's enormous. He was saying that, uh, last time he was on stage, he was like two fifteen or something. So in that ballpark. So like he'd, ha he'd, he's able to put on another over like 20 pounds of actual tissue. Yeah. And that's, that makes for a good off season. I mean, take two years off, you come back with a, significant like whole different package yeah you bring another like 15 pounds to the stage it'll look like a completely different person mm -hmm. that's wild but um how's the prep going how are you feeling right now being like four weeks out now and another 
seven weeks out. How are you feeling? How's food, energy, all that? So starting to prep off, I think we started like actually prepping, like the cutting phase of prep, 15, 15 and eight weeks. 15 and 18 weeks out and mm-hmm. um, I felt good of course you know initial prep whatever food's still high and I was feeling good and energized and nothing like this was by far the easiest prep so far I've had yeah. by far easiest like mentally physically everything just it was just working mm-hmm. and then uh just like the last week my energy is starting to come down yeah so I'm now I'm starting to feel it, like my energy wise, but like I'm constantly tired throughout the day. Um, also, my work schedule doesn't help. I mean, get off at two a.m. So is uh, that when you consistently get off? Because I can never tell when you're actually like, like because so, I feel like you train at different times that, during the day, unless you're just posting photos at random times. But <laughs> no, so my schedule's weird. Uh, it's an A B schedule. So like for three weeks, I'll work. Thursday to Sunday, and then it'll flip, and then I work Monday to Thursday. So every other month, I'll have like uh, weekends off. Gotcha. But it's 4 p.m. to 2 a.m., regardless of what days I'm working. Gotcha. So for three weeks, you're, so basically, regardless, you're four days on, three days off. Yep. Essentially, but you're working four to two, mm-hmm. you said, right? Okay. Yep. Yeah, that can be a lot, especially in prep. And yeah, so. Managing that work and um and prep, it's I mean it's not the hardest thing, but it, I mean it adds a little challenge because you can get stuck with something and you're like trying to get your mail in or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. So everybody who works like nine to fives and saying oh their stress levels is this and that, but you know I'm constantly like getting in the foot chase, high high priority calls, you know people getting stabbed. It's like, wow. hey, yeah, your stress level might be high, but, you know, this is a different kind of stress I got to go through. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's just good, though. Prep right now, it's, it's starting to – it don't suck. Honestly, I still feel good, but I'm starting to feel it, like, energy-wise. But, like, mentally, emotionally, like, everything, I feel good. Gym, yeah. gym pumps are still good, so um, they, they're they going – like, the pumps are going a little faster now, but, I mean, yeah. they're, still, they're still good. What's your, uh, like, salt intake right now? Like, are you guys supplementing salt at all, or are you just kind of, like, just uh, going as not, whatever? I really uh, sodium salt intake go at the moment. I just, mm-hmm. whatever I eat, my foods, I sauce them up, of course. But yeah. um, other than that, I don't, I'm not counting my sodium right now. Okay. Yeah, that's no. that was something we had to implement pretty quick into my prep was, was supplementing salt in just because of the lack of electrolytes that I was getting. Yeah. But – you're you're not nearly as like you're from what I've seen and what you've talked about, your body's not as nearly as picky as mine is when it comes to food. I mean, one no. carb, one gram of carb is certain prep, like I'd blow up. So supplementing in salt was like that was my that was my pump. It was literally just half a tea uh half a teaspoon or half a tablespoon, I forget what it was, of uh of salt before my workout. That was my pump. And it worked well, at least for me, but that was that was especially once we took out artificial flavors and I couldn't have like pre workout anymore. Oof, that just sucked. That's the worst. Yeah. That's oh, the it worst. was so bad. And then like <laughs> I didn't realize it until we took out artificial flavors, but like every coffee I drink is artificially flavored. So I had to like resort to like just plain, just regular ass black coffee. And I put like equal and shit in there. So I had to take that out. And then Stevia. I know you're a big fan, I think, of Stevia, right? Yeah. Yeah. See, I can't stand it. It's like, it's got this weird ass taste to it. It's like oregano. Like I love oregano, but some people just can't stand it, you know? So that's me with Stevia. I just can't stand Stevia. So like trying to transition from equal or like sweet and low or something to Stevia, it just was not going to work. I just, it just tastes like shit. I, I don't, my girlfriend says the same thing whenever we get like coffee or something. Yeah. So I'm like, put some stevia on there. It would be better. She's like, no, ew, I could taste the stevia. I'm like, taste it. Yeah. I, I can't taste it. I mean, it just tastes good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It no, it's, flavor. that's it's exactly how it is. Like it's got its own flavor, you know, no matter what I put stevia in, I could taste it. That's why like, I'm so glad. I think, didn't you give me like a serving of the uh, bolo gains or whatever it was a while back? Yeah. You were like, it's too sweet or something. 
Yeah. So that's, that's one of the like biggest things that maybe realized I didn't like stevia is because I tried that and I'm like, why does this taste terrible compared to rising grinds? And it's because they use stevia and they use a shit ton of stevia too. So I got like halfway through and I was like, I can't do it anymore. Yeah, but it does have its own flavor. Yeah. Cause you got like 80 grams of it. So that was like a good portion. That was like a big yeah. deal. Yeah. It's a good chunk. I mean, right now I'm like 60 grams of uh cream of rice prior to my workout, which is already a decent amount, but like, yeah, 80 was a lot. I got legit probably like halfway through and I was just like, dude, I'm just going to throw the fuck up in about a second. But some people say that about equal and sweet and low and shit like aspartame. Yeah. Like they, some people say they aspartame has a flavor, but I can't taste it at all. It just tastes sweet to me. So I'm blessed there at least. And I get to enjoy oregano. Unlike some people who think it tastes like soap. So oregano. yeah, I've never thought about oregano. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's weird. It's like a genetic thing, I guess, or something, how it's like oregano specifically, you, it either tastes good or it tastes like soap. Like it tastes like you're eating hand soap, but I got the genetics to allow for me to enjoy oregano and some good pico de gallo and shit. So, but is that, do you guys, do you think you're going to end up pulling artificial flavors at all? Yeah. He'll, he'll probably pull, he'll probably pull my protein powder actually this mm. week. I just sent him my update check-ins this morning. Still waiting on a response on that, but um, yeah, he's most likely going to drop food a little bit more. Cardio may go up or may say the same depending. Um, but yeah, I think, Four weeks out, he kind of want to switch the protein powders out and just do whole foods. Yeah. But but then about maybe, I would say about 10 days out, he'll tell me to stop taking uh, pre-workout and just do coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, but like as for the sauces, uh, he doesn't really mention anything about that until like, you know, two days out. He's like, I right, just use mustard or you yeah. know, hot sauce instead of your... You know, other sauces I have like G Hughes or um, the Flavor Gangs, you know, mm -hmm. low calorie sauces. But Damn, homie spent some money on some Flavor Gang shit. <laughs> Dude, that, that is literally my prep save. Like, if I don't have my Bola Gangs or them sauces, like, I don't think I could do prep. Like, <laughs> I don't think I could do it. It'd be Man, too miserable. Just, I can't justify the price. It's just. I'd have to be bringing in some serious money for me to be like, yeah, $15 for 12 ounces of sauce is totally worth it. <laughs> I just can't do it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's worth it for me. I could just buy it. Yeah. You know, in my head, I'm just fine. It. It's probably not just fine, but <laughs> yeah, I make, but it I mean, me. you're on some good sauces during your out, your bulk season, your off season for sure. I was so oh, jealous yeah. of that. Cause you sent me the photo of your food and I was just like, in the middle of my prep, I'm like, fuck. I've had nothing but mustard for like six weeks straight. Like this, like, yeah, son no, of a bitch. I can't do that. Yeah, I keep all sauces and all that stuff in until about like peak week or so. Um, mm -hmm. And then we'll start cutting back some. But um, my pre-workout pre and all that probably be like, yeah, the beginning of peak week or just before. And then I would just yeah. eat black coffee pre-workout. And then that's whenever we'll start like monitoring sodium. Not really like monitor, but he's like, keep it consistent. And then mm -hmm. because, I mean, like the day before the show, two days, one day out, a show day, we'll do a bump with sodium just to bring mm -hmm. out, um, you know, the vascularity and the pumps and all that stuff. Yeah. I remember like, I think it was three days out or four days out, we started increasing salt intake. By the time it was the day before the show, especially Excalibur, I think I was like almost half a teaspoon of salt with every meal. Like there's so much fucking salt, but then the morning of the show, I was cramping like a motherfucker. Like my quads were just killing me. I, I don't even, I didn't even need to like contract them at all. If I just stretch my legs out, they'll just cramp the fuck up. So we had to get some electrolytes in, but yeah, I mean, salt intake really made the blood flow a lot better, at least for me. But the pre-workout, I think of artificial flavors, we pulled like, I think it was two weeks out. We pulled off artificial flavors, and I think he said to take out pre-workout like three weeks out or something, something like mm, that. So there was a while I wasn't taking yeah. pre-workout. Yeah, it sucked. And, you know, it's like also on top of that, we pulled like long before, like basically when we started prep, we pulled my Adderall out of my system too, which is like basically like an antidepressant almost for me, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, I'm feeling like depressed all the way through prep pretty much. 
and then yeah. we're pulling all this extra shit and then i can't have my like diet or like my pepsi zeros anymore and shit and then all of a sudden all my flavored coffee is gone i'm just like wow i'm literally like living off of fumes at this point i did do the math at one point i think before i can't remember which show it was but before one of them i did the math i did it in um i did it out how much food we were having and i was like 1400 calories or something at one point no, with like, like poverty calories literally <laughs> like barely surviving and i think at the time i was doing an hour and a half of cardio a day or something like that and i'm like you gotta be crazy to do this shit when i saw that i was like dude i'm not okay like <laughs> i'm not mentally there there's no way yeah luckily i'm not at that point yet um i think food's still about i, I don't i don't have tracked it but if i had it yet, yeah it'd be around 2200 yeah which is more substantial yeah. for you in comparison to you know like weight wise mm-hmm. like i think i was like 190 when i was taking in the 1400 but like you taking in 2200 now would have been like me taking in like 3000 or a little less than that yeah and prep so i'm very jealous it must be sick <laughs> yeah but um it's still, i'm still always hungry it's yeah still, uh... oh for sure yeah especially with all your added cardio and shit too because i remember last time i saw you in the gym you do like 10 15 minutes of walking or something before working out i don't know if you're doing any other cardio other than that but now you're doing what 45 minutes post workout or something? No, so I have 40 minutes of cardio um, in general, uh, five days a week, but I split it into 30 minutes fasted and then 10 minutes after the workout. Mm-hmm. Um, just because mm-hmm. I don't like doing 40 minutes straight, that's that's a long time. Yeah, there is. I think at one point we were doing. I think it was like 60 minutes or something and I was doing it all in one go after my workout and Tom was like yeah don't do that I'm like why not I'm like it's easier for me to do it that way and he's like you're you're talking about like you eat you go to the gym let's say like an hour after you eat then you train for like an hour then you do an hour of cardio and then you drive home he's like you're talking like three and a half hours between meals he's like so just split it up he's like do half fasted half post-workout it's like fuck fine so that's when I started doing 30 fast days and then 30 post workout. By the time we hit Excalibur, that was it was 45 minutes fast and then 45 minutes before meal six. And I'd usually end up having my post workout meal and then meal six. So like post workout was meal five and then meal six was at like 9 30 or something. So like I'd come home, like the last two weeks of prep, I'd come home, like including peak week, I'd come home and like have like maybe an hour to relax, to eat and relax, and then go back, do cardio, come back, eat, and go to bed. That was my day. Just up, cardio, work, train, cardio, eat, sleep. Yeah, that's, like, how, <laughs> that's how prep is. Like, you you really don't have time to do anything else. Yeah. Especially when you get, like, deeper into it because, I mean, you're doing more cardio, you're spending more time in the gym, and um, you're just – you're always eating every, like, two and a half hours. So it's, like – it's hard to get other stuff in there, but I mean, of course it's, you could do it because you know, you're always going to have to find a way, mm-hmm. but, but yeah, it's, it's difficult. So, yeah. I also noticed I didn't have like the mental energy even to like do most shit. Like video games were barely in my life. Like I barely, I like listened to a lot of books instead of reading. Like I just, I didn't have the mental energy to do shit. So yeah. like not to mention just the time, but also just not wanting to do anything ever. I was just too exhausted mentally and physically. So that was, that was no fun. But with that being said, what's your like uh, training split now? Has it changed up for prep or anything? Yes. For the majority of my off season, this past off season and you know, the majority of the prep until I think about six weeks out, I switched it up. I was doing push pool legs. Mm-hmm. And then I switched it up kind of like a little bit more of a bro split, but it's like chest with side delt. And then I do back legs, essentially push pull legs. And then I added um, a shoulder day with arms and then another back day and then another leg day. So it would be, so basically it's still push pull legs, but I added shoulders and arms. 
as a separate yeah. day. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's similar to that now. So is it, was it three days on one day off or was it six day on one day off? I do uh, four days on one day off, two days on one day off. Okay. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah mine's very similar. It's the, it's the chest back legs and then it's like shoulders mm-hmm. and then another back legs, but triceps is on the chest day and then biceps is on the back day. So it's relatively similar. Yeah. Um, but I'm three on one off and three on one off for that at least. What's your, is that your, that's not your training split now? Yeah. So that's what it is now. Uh, oh, okay. it, was, it was just push, pull, legs, rest, push, pull, legs, rest. So I essentially gotcha. just added an extra day into the split for the uh, shoulders and arms. Gotcha. Okay. I see now. Yeah. And then, so you're, what day are you skipping cardio essentially? Like, are you doing it only on training days or I tend to not do cardio on my um, rest days. I take, I try to take complete rest days where I'm not doing cardio, no nothing. Yeah. Just, if anything, I'm getting steps in, but other than that, I just try to be lazy. Gotcha. So you're training before your shift then when you do train on yeah. your, your days of work. Yeah. Days of work. I'll get up about 10 o'clock. I'll do my fast cardio. Uh, 30 minutes then i come home eat pre-workout meal go straight to the gym work out hit my last 10 minutes of cardio come back post-workout prep my my meals for work and then go to work gotcha yeah that makes sense yeah i've always i, I feel like every single time i see a post videos and shit it's always at different times and even before like your current job it was just like always yeah. kind of random but at least <laughs> with like the season coming up and shit you don't have to deal with the five o'clock rush for the most part, which yep. is good. Cause I was, I was thinking about that the other day. I was like, cause I think it was when you said you woke up at, or you're done work at one 30 or something. And I was like, Oh, so he's not hitting that five o'clock bullshit at golds mm-hmm. really anymore for the most part. Nah, I'm usually when I'm working, of course, I'm usually in the gym by 12, 12 30 um, mm-hmm. in the morning. So, and then uh, when I'm off, when I'm not working, I, I try to go about two, two 30. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, at least you don't have to deal with it, especially during prep. Like, that shit would be annoying when you have yeah. to wait for all the machines and shit. Yep. I've heard, people have told me, a couple of people at the gym I go to now went to Gold's, and they said they still know people there. And they said that it's like, it's almost like, um, like you can't even walk anymore. It gets so busy sometimes in the, like, five, six o'clock rush. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. Yeah, I'm. I'm glad I don't have to deal with that anymore at least but i mean you know um what's gonna call this have an open gym crush it crush coliseum has an open open they're gym having, so they're having uh i think all week next week monday to friday they're having like an open gym so you can go in there and work out for free hmm. i gotta check that out yeah i think it's yes. on their uh, page but i seen that i was like hmm. i'm gonna have to go there before work monday to hit some legs but yeah, I gotta I gotta check that out because it's like the forty five minute drive is already hard to justify for there, and then the an extra twenty bucks to just the train is like it's fucking expensive yeah. just to go there for one day. It is. That's why I try to. I, I go maybe like once every three months or something. Yeah, yeah, I go every once in a while. I was I almost went a couple times there, but I recently, but I just ended up not feeling like it. I was like, I just don't feel like to drive. My whole training session is like maybe an hour and it takes me an hour and a half to drive there and back, you know? So mm-hmm. it's like, I'm just really not feeling it. I'd rather just, you know, by the time I drove there and drove back, I could be drive to the gym, train and come back and be done. Yeah. Let alone training time. So I'm good. I just, I didn't feel like it, but if we ever, if me and my wife ever move anywhere, it's going to be uh, hopefully closer to Statesville. That's kind of my thing. I'm like, let's move a little North. Heck yeah. Uh, so I can be closer to, we could theoretically, she wants to stay close to work here in Huntersville. But uh, I was like, if we move north, we can stay pretty close to your work. And then also I could better justify going to crush it. Mm-hmm. But I, <laughs> but, think their, and, their I was going to be cheaper. I think the memberships actually went, like, they increased their prices. I'm not surprised. I don't remember what the pricing was on the memberships. It's just, it was, for me, it was the drive that I could have justified. I think it was, wasn't it like 60 bucks a month or something? Yeah, I think that's what it was, but I think it's like a hundred or something now. No shot. I gotta go look this up. Let me look this up real quick. I think that's absurd. That's what, I think I've heard it though, but if it is, then that's crazy. 
Yeah, let me see what they got now. Um, see if I can find out what they're. Okay, so day pass is fifteen bucks. So this is on their website. Day pass is fifteen bucks. It's sixty five bucks a month oh. for twelve months, or one hundred fifteen for a couple, like two people. Mm. Family is just under one fifty, uh, but military and first responder is fifty five bucks a month. So you'd save ten bucks a month right there. Yeah. So, so that's pretty me. dope. Yeah, I don't. I mean, it says with a twelve month contract. Monthly memberships include an additional fifty dollars sign up fee. So, I guess you could spend, you know, one fifteen the first month, and then sixty five after that for a month to month or something. Yeah, Maybe that's what they were talking about. I don't know. Maybe they they added that sign up fee or something. Yeah, probably, probably. But oh. that's what their website says, at least. So that's not bad. Yeah, I mean, that's. I think so, sixty sixty five is justifiable for what they got. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It's, it's a good gym, just the environment and all, and all of it. Just yeah, it's way better than uh, Fitness Factory. Yeah, it's fucking damn shame that Fitness Factory's kind of just like falling off. I feel yeah. like I go there and I, it just feels so awkward. Just everybody with their tripods. It feels like a, I'm in what is it Alpha Land or something. Yeah, it's just weird. I don't like that. I'm yeah, not that's a big influencer type person. Like I like yeah. using social media to showcase like my bodybuilding, but I'm not. I, I don't like this like, influencer aspect of fitness. Yeah, it drives me nuts. And they got all the fucking microphones hooked up, like the Bluetooth microphones and shit now. Yeah, like it's cool. Like if you're gonna do like a video edit or something, like while you're on prep, like like a workout yeah. edit, but like vlogging or whatever. Oh, yeah, no. I mean, it's the only one I could ever see like that justifies it is someone like Sam Sulik or something like who actually has like a true following. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I, I don't see people that I like can tell has a true following when I, when I go to gyms like that. And they have rules that say like no tripods and shit apparently, but it sounds like they don't give a shit depending on who you are. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it just, the pricing, I just can't, I can't pay for something like that and then they like remove the like you you have to wear a shirt all the time and shit so oh, like, all right yeah. we can't even do like posing now that's cool all right yeah the best lighting in the game and it can't even take a shirt off yeah literally and then like you always like they'll call you out if you don't spray down your machines and shit now and i know as someone who was going there one of my coworkers actually was going there and he said he paid the 60 bucks and he said he like went to the other side like one time for like one of the machines over there and just to see like if they would say something and he got an email like the next day they're like hey we saw you on the cameras going to the wrong side they said you do it one more time we're going to cancel your membership i'm like that's fucking insane so they have to <laughs> keep track of who like who pays for one side yeah i guess he's he, that's what he said I mean, I don't know like the extent of the email, but basically like that was the gist of the email. And he said he got it after he did that because he just pays for the one side, which is also bullshit too. Like, I don't feel like you should be charging two prices for two halves of the gym. Yeah. Like I feel like just one price for the whole thing. Yeah. That's dumb. That's, I never heard of that like that before. It's weird. Like I can understand if it was like, so like there's Olympus, which has like, the machinery and then kind of like a bench and squat section for like all the power lifters. Cause it's like mainly a powerlifting gym. So I can understand if they were like, Oh, it's 30 bucks. I think it was like 40 bucks a month, month to month or something there. They're like, Oh, it's 40 bucks a month for like the bodybuilding and powerlifting section. But then they have this like whole turf and like calisthenics section in the back. That's like separate with a door. So like, I can understand like 10 more bucks a month or something to like get access to that. But yeah. like, another 40 bucks a month for like those, those random key pieces on that right side at fitness factory just drives me fucking insane. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's weird. I don't, I don't like that concept. Um, that's why I'll go there from time to time just to work out with some of my boys that go there. But yeah, other than that, I would not make an effort to go there. Yeah. I think, um, there's some people that go near or go there that are in the area. I think like Brooks goes every once in a while. I feel like he just has a bunch of day passes that he does. I can't fucking tell, but they're still elite, I guess. 
Elite has like a three month free promo or something going on right now. If you sign up, it's like the first three months or something is free, or the last three months or whatever it is is free. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, there's also there's a few more being built too. I think there's like Core Fit is being built, which is kind of like an influencer gym. Mm. And then there's there's something else being built too. I forget what it was called, like Iron Iron Gains or some shit. I've been posting it. about it. Yeah, there's they're both core fit, and the other one are both opening. I think one of them said like fall this year, and the other one's like early next year. I think core fits early next year. The other one's fall this year, but I forget what it was called. I'd have to look into it. But people were talking about it. People were hyping it up and put it on their stories and shit. And I'm like, what is this gym? I check it out, and there's no renderings of what's going to be there. Like there's no other locations. It's one location and it's like one guy opening it. I'm like, why is everybody hyped for this? I don't understand. Hmm. At least with core fit, there's like a Greenville location in South Carolina and then one in Spartanburg. I think another one in between those two cities or something. So like they already have a few locations. So this like, this is just their fourth location opening up in Charlotte. And they got like a bunch of like neon light bulbs and shit going everywhere and all these like cool colors and graffiti and whatnot. So it's going to be more influencer focused and all that. Like the videos that they post on their Instagram is like, is like high quality, like TikTok shit. That's funny. Yeah. That's so cool I'm sure they'll make money. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, there's also office gym, but yeah, I still go to, uh, I'm still going to mega flex and good value there. I got both gyms to go to for 35 bucks a month or something like that for a year contract. So worth it for me at least. Yeah. But make it like I still gotta give that a shot. Yeah, I, I kind of miss golds in some aspects, especially when like before golds got too busy and we had access to both the, the Lake Norman and the Huntersville. Like that was pretty sick. Cause you get, you know, I got best of both worlds, but then it got way too busy. I'm just like, I just can't, I can't do it anymore. I'm at the gym yeah. at like five thirty every day now. So at least yeah, like you say, sometimes I'm like, I don't want to deal with Huntersville, so I'll go to Lake Norman. Um, but, I mean, it's still almost as equally as packed during those peak hours. Yeah. Um, I've been to Harrisburg once, and that was a pretty, pretty nice gym. Yeah. It's, it's smaller, but it's a clean layout. Yeah, I've heard it's gotten better, like a lot better since they got it. Yeah. I think Elite got a, Elite got a second location in Concord now. They bought out one that. of the golds. Yeah. I don't know how that one is, but I just can't stand the life life fitness equi- uh, Lake Norman. I don't like that shit. The one that the ones that move with you, mm-hmm. I can't I can't stand it. Yeah, that was my bad. biggest problem with that with that location was just that equipment, which or a hoist or whatever it is, life fitness hoist, whatever brand it is, which isn't you know anybody's fault. Who owns it now? It's just that's what they decided to go with for the equipment before when they opened mm-hmm. the location. So they got to work with it. But yeah, it was such a pain. I hate that. Is uh, Megaflex open on the weekends? Like for oh, yeah. staff, staff hours? Yeah, I believe they have staffed hours on the weekends. I, I don't remember. Let me look it up. Let me see what they got for staffed hours. Um, I don't remember what the uh, staffed hours are. It's 24-hour access. I know that. Yeah, Friday through Sunday, 7 to noon for staffed hours. And staffed hours are pretty consistent, too. They're They're not like... Like there's other gyms I've been to where they say like like seven to noon and they'd only be there like from like ten to noon and yeah. they dip, you know. They're pretty consistent with the hours. If but it is twenty four seven. If you get there before noon though, would they like let you stay since you already like paid and stuff? Or would they like, yeah. want you to leave once they leave? I think Probably. um when I started going there, I asked that question because I think I wanted to get a day pass, but I was going to be there longer. And they said, no, as long as you paid and you, you paid for the waiver, you're good. So, or you paid and you signed the waiver, you're fine. But after that, once you sign up, they give you a key fob. You can scan to get in. Even if it's staffed, it's still locked. Mm. So you have to scan to get in. And, you know, there's a whole rule of like not letting anybody in behind you or something like that. But yeah, the, the one, in university is pretty sweet. It's way more grungy. It's not like it's rusty, not super, super clean, not pretty, nothing like that. But like 
it's serious. Like there's like nobody in there really is having like conversations. You know what I mean? Just like, everybody's games. training. Yeah. Everybody's in their zone. So that one's pretty sick. Especially during the summer, there's no AC. It's just it's just uh like big box fans that they got. So it got pretty hot, which is sick. Um, everybody's drenched in sweat. Everybody's training hard, and everybody's in and out. You know, nobody's wasting time. Then the other one in North Lake is pretty sweet. It's uh it's got AC and heat and all that. I don't know if the other one has heat. I remember I trained there once, like December of last year or something, and it was cold as shit in there. So I'm not sure if like they have heat or not. I can't remember, but uh the the plaza one i think has heat and ac but that one's sweet because it's like almost always dead there's never anybody there which one you go to i go to both it just depends on what i'm training um so like like arm day and like shoulder day you could like argue like goes back and forth like so like my shoulder day i go to the plaza one which is in north lake same with quad day because quads is like pretty back and forth there's there's no like real big like differences Mm -hmm. i mean the biggest one is that the the university one does have more like equipment but really the biggest one is just the squat press and like i have to load up so many plates on squat press i just don't feel like fucking using it i have to put like eight nine plates on there per side and by the time i do all that it's like 20 minutes on that one movement yeah so it just takes all day so i go to the other one for quads but then like hams for my leg day, my ham day, I go to the university one. My back day, I go to the university one just because they have a pullover machine. And then I do chest at the university one just because it's fun. Yeah. But yeah, I go back and forth and it's it's pretty sweet. I like the natural lighting. They got the garage doors there. So natural lighting is pretty cool. It's pretty consistent with that. But um, it's also interesting too because like there was one time where I was training there and there was like a super bad thunderstorm and rain and all that. And the garage doors were open. You could like hear it over your music and shit. <laughs> and like, you look outside, it looks like an a- like actual hell outside, but then you're like inside and training and whatnot. It was pretty dope. Oh, but yeah. I'm going to have to check it out. Yeah, cool, these, uh, coming up weekends that I'm off. See if you want to hit a, a back or chest day or something. Yeah. Yeah. Just let me know. I'll be down. Uh, it's a solid ass gym. I think if you're going to check out one, you should check out the university one. Yeah. The other, the other one you can treat kind of like Lake Norman, where if you don't feel like going to the other one or because like the other one is getting kind of busy, which is kind of fucking annoying because the university one wasn't as busy before, especially during the summer. But like now that it's starting to cool down, I think mm-hmm. people are starting to go there again. And it's, it's like, I'm actually having to start to like move my workouts around a little bit like for what I'm training. Yeah. And that's, that was, that was the problem with gold. So I'm like, this ain't good. I mean, this is the whole reason I came to Megaflex is that it's never fucking busy, but here we are. I got to start waiting for shit. It's inevitable, man. It's bound to happen. Yeah. I mean, hopefully with the, Especially you know, the time once, you go. Oh yeah. Five 30. That's when everybody goes. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, hopefully, you know, once Christmas season is done and all that and, or I mean, after January, I mean like after all the new year's resolutioners, like, after January, it'll hopefully slow down. But I mean, I always have the plaza one. I did the plaza one yesterday to see what would happen on a, what did I hit yesterday? It was back. I did a back day, but I normally don't go back there. And there was like nobody. So I'm like, all right. So if I really need to, I could just go back to the plaza one more. Cause that's when I started, when I started there, I was going almost entirely to the plaza one in North Lake. And then I like slowly started trying out the university one. I was like, all right, this is pretty dope. And then I kept going to that one and started like flop, flip flopping back and forth. So if I need to, I just start going to the plaza one. Do I have to deal with all the fucking people I don't want to deal with? But I mean, it is also like a different level of human too. Like, I feel like I see like way more bodybuilders and shit at like mega flex than I do at golds from what I can remember. So Pretty pretty cool motivation, at least there. Yeah, a mega flex kind of gives you the it sets the tone of how you know you kind of follow the lead of the environment. You know, yeah, you you don't want to be the only one grunting and pounding weight when everybody's like, you know, all quiet like it's a library or something. Yeah, or like just having conversations, showing up for the photos and whatnot. Yeah, cardio bunnies and whatnot. <laughs> but yeah. I mean. 
with your prep and all that, I wouldn't be surprised if you're like, if you don't like touch any other gym or anything like that until after your shows, just for consistency sake. But yeah, that's, that's usually how it is from time to time. I'll hit a, a gym with somebody else just to um, add that excitement to working out. Cause you know, mm-hmm. in prep, once you get really down to it, you know, a few weeks out, it's like, you need that extra motivation to make a solid workout because like mentally you're drained. So you don't want to like really push yourself, but at that, you know, three, four, two weeks out, you really need to push yourself the hardest. Yeah. Yeah. That was, it's, it got to the point where I just didn't even, I mean, even now I feel like partially because of prep and partially just because of pushing it through rebound. I just don't even want to train half the fucking time. Like I'm just like, I just don't, I just want to sit at home and do nothing, you know? It's, I've kind of like lost the love for it a little bit, but hopefully soon, you know, we'll be pulling it back, pulling PCT or doing PCT and all that. So hopefully soon we'll have like a rest phase, you know, where I'm doing like a few rest days a week or something and I can just enjoy taking some time off. But then, you know, after that, give me like a few weeks of just a few days of rest a week and I'll be good to go to train hard again. Mm -hmm. But yeah, prep really crushed it for me it's just like i'm just tired i got tired of training and tired of being in the gym all the time we definitely need a break after prepping yeah you're gonna pull another uh you're gonna do another week of eating whatever you want again <laughs> <laughs> no nah, i'm gonna try to um after nationals i'm gonna try to limit myself to like all right three days max then back on it because it's just gonna be a rabbit hole i'll be i'll gain 20 oh, yeah. pounds in two weeks yeah, I mean, for me, it was like that'd be when I was like, "Oh yeah, no, you just put it, put it right back on." I mean, <laughs> I did I did like ten pounds in one week or something, just because I just put it all back on all the all the water and shit. But after Victory Classic, after Victory Classic, I had the burger and fries between pre judging and finals, and then I had whatever I wanted, I think that night. And then the next morning I had like a good breakfast and that was it. We're back on it after that. Mm-hmm. And for me at the time it was, that was enough. I mean, it was only like six weeks of prep or something that went into that show essentially. So like it really wasn't too, too bad. It wasn't too long. So, you know, those couple meals there was, was enough for me to like stay motivated. Yeah. But you also started yours so far out. I mean, it's, you, you weren't, you didn't pull so much food right off the bat. You know, it wasn't cold turkey. It was just, all right, yeah. we're going to start I've been having, slowly. Uh, like damn near refeeds every week. Like either yeah. burger or fries or sushi, like pretty consistently, like every week for the past, since we started prep. Yeah. Just now we started like cutting back on the refeeds, but it was like a refeed every week with like high carb days, the following days and stuff like that. So, Man, and there's and there's shit that you've told me, and I'm like, how the hell are you losing weight? Like, I'm like, that's fucking crazy. Losing but fat, all that, but I had a burger like two weeks ago. I was like 163 point something. He gave me a refeed burger and fries. All right, next day weight didn't budge, so he gave me a high carb day, and then the following day my weight dropped like a pound after that. Mm-hmm. After the refeed, burger fries and a high carb, it dropped a pound. So we're initially going to like cut back on the calories that day, but it's like, no, go ahead and get another high carb day. So another high carb day dropped another pound. And then we're like, all right, cool. We're back on baseline diet now. <laughs> Fuck, dude. I wish I was in the same boat as you, man. That's insane. Yeah, it was weird. You, your metabolism needs that, needs that spike. I feel like if. If food gets too low, my body doesn't respond. Yeah, you're you're very uh what's there's if you're needing high carb days, then you lose your insulin sensitivity very easily, I think, is what that would mean. You need the spike in insulin sensitivity to lose the weight. So I'm very the opposite. If I I'm very insulin sensitive all the time, so any carb just puts on weight. So it's fucking, it's a pain, but I'm, I'm, I'm jealous, man. That's a, that's a, that's a dope prep. That's a sick prep. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's been good. Like I said, it's been good. Um, yeah. But other than that, it's just, now it's starting to, we're about to start pushing it so we could 
bring out this last bit of condition. Of course, uh, we're not going to be completely 100% for this regional show. I'm hoping about 95%-ish, mm-hmm. um, you know, if we're talking percent. But hopefully pretty pretty pure. But, you know, of course, room for improvement into nationals. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how we bridge the gap from, you know, the regional show three weeks into the national show, like what, you know, protocol is going to be as for, like, diet and everything. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, even if you showed up like 90%, I don't think you'll have a problem winning overall at regionals. Yeah. I think I think your biggest thing is literally just going to have to come down to just your, your confidence on stage. Like, mm-hmm. if, as long as you bring your confidence, you got that shit in the bag, you know? Yeah. Um, there's this video I saw earlier today. I wanted to see what your take was on it. This guy was talking about how he doesn't think C-Bomb's going to win this year. He thinks that it's potentially going to be Urs because Urs has the confidence on stage and has got a lot more size and has better posing than Ramon. So if you bring that, that confidence, supposedly you'll win. <laughs> no, you, you can't bring a, a C class physique with confidence and be an A class physique with, you yeah. know, with being depressed or whatever, not confident enough. Like at the end of the day, it's going to be a physique standpoint. Now the physiques are very similar and it's like, yeah, and structure and size and symmetry and everything like that the judges are looking for. All right, you might, all right, this guy looks like he's not enjoying it. This guy is like killing it. Then maybe yeah, I might persuade the judges, but no. And for that example, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm in the same boat. I was like, there's no shot Chris is losing this year. No. Like, there's no way. He can and go then... on stage crying while he and his poses and he'll still win. <laughs> like, oh, f- for sure. <laughs> you get a half-ass his poses and still win. Exactly. Dude, the dude's physique is just next level. But I could see, I could see Urs beating Ramon this year. And I kind of hope he does. I'm not the biggest fan of Ramon's physique, personally. Yes, yeah, I don't like his posing. Yeah, that was my biggest problem with his Olympia last year. His vacuum wasn't really a vacuum, and his arms, I think, are just very overpowering. Yeah, but. That's weird. I haven't even that's seen my opinion. a recent physique update of him, but that's for a different time, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we got, we're only a couple, we're a couple of weeks out from, I think, the Olympia now. So we will start seeing some more people making predictions and shit for what's going to happen there. But um, in the meantime, you got your prep to focus on and get your posing dialed in and all that. I still got to work on my posing routine. I Because Classic has a one-minute posing routine for finals. Yeah. So I, I'm still going to... Find the song, one, and then two, mm-hmm. find some a good posing routine that with good transitions and two certain poses, but we're going to get it. I'm going to start going to like Norman Gym more often because of the posing room just to practice mm-hmm. that. I mean, just regionals, if you get your posing dialed in, that will oh, look so much fucking better than everybody else. Yeah. Like, you know, watching watching classic men's open, it was just the posing just is never there during regionals. So if you get that dialed in, get good transitions and all that, you'll stick out regardless of physique. Yeah. Um, I know that they say, you know, it doesn't really matter to them too much, especially men's physique. They don't they really don't give a shit about men's physique posing at regionals, <laughs> but classic that you know, they're not super, super picky on the posing, but still if you if you get those transitions and shit down, I think I think that'll put you ahead a bit. Yeah. Um, have you have any ideas of what song you might pick? You got a couple you're throwing around? No, bro. No, I kind of want like nothing too fast paced. I kind of want just yeah. more of like a, yeah, just not as too slow, but like something that's, that, that'll flow, you know? Yeah. That's so, what's up. We'll see. We'll figure it out. Yeah. You'll get it. You'll get it figured out. You got time. You got a, you got a month roughly. <laughs> so plenty of time. And I'm sure if you throw out like, like asking people around or something like that, you'll probably find something to, to use or something. You know, mm-hmm. it'll, it'll click. You'll find it, and you'll be like, "All right, this is the one." Yeah, yeah. But do you know if the nationals are going to allow you a minute song? They do, right? Or top five? If you make first call out, they'll bring out the finals, and the top five would do their posing routine. Gotcha. But if okay, I, I wasn't that, sure how that worked. If you're outside that, yeah, you don't might as well not even show up the finals because you're not gonna be able to do nothing. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear that. Yeah, and that's just top five for finals. That's it. I mean, for uh, first call out, it's yep. just five. I believe so. Well, okay, um, it could be more, but 
I think only top five actually do their uh, routine. Yeah, yeah. I think I've, I think for first callouts, I've seen five and I've seen seven. Okay. Yeah. For 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 first callouts, but I think it just varies from show to show. Mm-hmm. But I mean, Texas would be sick, man. That's that's exciting. That'd be fun. Yep. I'm looking forward. It's to It's not it. a matter of if; it's a matter of when. When you hit Texas, it'll be sick. It'll be fun, man. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. But yeah, I appreciate you taking the time today. You know, maybe after Texas or something, have you on for 20 minutes or something, talking about your results and <laughs> how you felt and all that. A little recap, yeah. Yeah, quick recap. See how it went. Yeah, but, I'll be cool. Yeah, I appreciate your time, man. But with that being said, thanks for listening, guys. It's chewy for you. Four weeks out and seven weeks out. So we'll see how that goes. But wish you all the luck, man. I appreciate you, bro. All right. We'll see you guys. See you.